Alright, what's going on YouTube? Brutal Death by here once again. How are you guys doing? As per my last video, I mentioned some brief changes to Battlefield 1 that DICE was implementing. Lo and behold, the next day the patch was released. So today I just want to go over the gist of what those changes are, what they mean, and how that impacts the game, as well as offer up my own commentary and opinion on it. This was a meaty patch, weighing in at about 2.2 gigabytes that involved performance optimizations, bug squashing, some map rebalancing, weapon changes, teamwork mechanics, as well as the addition of game modes and, you know, the reworking of some existing game modes. I'm just going to be covering briefly just some of the most interesting and prominent changes, but you can actually read the patch notes yourself and I'll include a link down below. I also wanted to briefly discuss what other improvements can be made to this game, you know, all opinions are my own so draw your own conclusions. For all my PC brothers and sisters out there, this patch includes some performance optimizations as well as the ability to rent servers. No longer can you rent third party. DICE has taken their system in-house and attempting to provide their clients with the same degree of administrative power and control. The key word there is attempting right now because as it sits, the servers are in a beta phase and do not offer nearly the same degree of creative and administrative control as a third party service provider. Things like being able to password protect your server or adjust the player count that's needed to start around, you know, even and abandoning certain weapons or being able to kick players are missing and dice they've already begun to run out of servers in certain regions of Europe and North America which is just a terrible customer experience if dice wants to monopolize and streamline the server process they really need to have the infrastructure ready and in place to meet the demand I understand what they're going for you know trying to have you know a consistent battlefield experience but hopefully they'll get more servers online soon to avoid those issues Moving on to some gameplay changes, there have been a few noteworthy balances and changes to this game. The Hell Regal got a mild slap on the wrist with a bit of horizontal recoil, but added sustained fire before cooldown, so you can actually fire this gun longer before you know you hit the cooldown period. On personal testing, I didn't find this horizontal wiggle to be particularly noticeable or bad. Horizontal recoil is still a bit of a nerf because it's not quite as easy to manage compared to vertical recoil, but if you reset your bursts when it gets too unmanageable or out of range, then you'll be just fine with this gun. Overall, the Hell Regal is still pretty much what I consider in the god tier trinity of assault weapons, along with the Automatico and the Model 10A Hunter shotgun. Speaking of shotguns, DICE have adjusted their consistency, but no major balance changes have been made from what I can tell to the Model 10A Hunter. It's still a one-shotting machine, taking out people at 15 to 20 meter ranges, which I think is a little bit too good, and I think they could take a look at balancing that just a bit. As it stands, I think there's consensus among the Battlefield community that it is the most dominant shotgun, and this hurts weapon variety in a game that is already struggling from weapon variety or a lack thereof. What incentive does that give players to try other shotguns that are statistically inferior or inconsistent? Just some food for thought. LMGs have also gotten quite a bit of lovin' in this patch, and for better or for worse, their suppressive capabilities have been magnified quite a bit. If you watch my support class guide, I talk about the suppressive spread mechanic, which emphasized a small period of inaccuracy from the weapon's initial firing to suppress the target. Well, LMGs now fire more accurately, and this role of suppression has been emphasized quite a bit more. Before this patch, suppression was something that happened more often than not as a long-range mechanic. Now it takes, you know, only a small volley or grouping or burst from an LMG, and you'll be fully suppressed at medium range. Your screen will darken, your optic will sway, your bullet bloom will deviate wildly, and your recoil will substantially increase. I remember spawning in on a friend of mine with a bipoded LMG, and I was already suppressed the second I spawned in, and even from a proned out bipoded position, my recoil was unmanageable and my bullets were flying wildly in all directions. What's worse was that the visual cue of darkening around my screen didn't trigger properly, letting me know that I was under the suppression effect. This caused a couple of seconds of confusion before I figured figured out what the hell was going on and got the hell out of dodge, but can you imagine how confusing that would be for a new player? DICE really needs to fix the bug where the visual cue doesn't trigger because new players are not going to know what the hell's going on or why their bullets are missing even when their aim is on point, and that will lead to a lot of frustrating and inconsistent moments for them and prevent them from learning the suppression mechanic. Overall, it looks like DICE Sweden have seemingly reverted back to the Battlefield 3 days of suppression with optic sway, visual suppression, massive bullet deviation, and increased recoil all compounding on the suppressed target to severely penalize their ability to return fire, making firing back pretty much useless and untenable if you're suppressed. My main recommendation is to just run away if you can and get to cover. The suppression effect will wear off after a couple of seconds if you do so. 
Moving on, DICE have also tweaked the Operations game mode. This is perhaps my favorite game mode as I can find it admittedly a bit frustrating playing on Conquest with a team that doesn't want to play the objective, and the team balancing algorithm doesn't really seem to remix the teams after each round, so getting steamrolled over and over, you know, isn't exactly the most fun thing, and there's only so much, you know, myself or my squad can contribute if nobody else is making concerted efforts to win to the point where I'm pretty much questioning if my fellow blueberries are eating glue in their spare time. But thankfully Operations is a very straightforward game mode with two or three objective points that you attack or defend in a linear fashion. It's incredibly fun. But DICE have really tampered with it as of late. They looked at the winning statistics and saw that the attacking side wasn't winning as much as they ought to, so they applied a huge band-aid to the problem. Instead of looking at flag placement, map balance, capture points, or just the simple fact that these conquest style maps aren't designed the best for an operations game type, DICE Sweden instead opted to just pad the attacking numbers and buff them across the board. For instance, in 64-man operations, the number of tickets the attacker had has been boosted from 150 to 250 tickets. That's insane. That represents a 66% boost in ticket count. Not only that, but any time the attackers clear a sector, they now get 50 tickets instead of 30, and 3 tickets instead of 2 for every soldier you clear out of a sector after taking it. And to top it all off, attackers capture the defending flags more quickly. And it's not like this is Conquest where the tickets bleed down over time. No, that's actually 250 tickets that represent a kill. So you have to kill 250 people at least. So you essentially have a defending team that needs to now kill 750 attackers who have the help of behemoths who capture your flags more quickly and who get a huge boost in tickets every time they take a sector. I feel this is very punishing and, and just excessive to good defenders and slows down the match to a crawl. Operations was already a lengthy game mode, often spanning the better part of an hour, but with these meat grindy, exhaustive changes, operations can go for over two hours if the defenders have to defend multiple maps. Not to mention they haven't adjusted the algorithm to drop more battle packs to account for the massive time investment you just sunk into playing operations, which is a huge oversight. So if you want to grind battle packs, stick with shorter game modes like Team Deathmatch. This is what I call the lazy man's approach to balancing. Instead of looking at the fundamental issues, they just pad the numbers across the board and call it a day. Like for instance, with the bunker capture point on Monte Grappa, all the defensive players just hoard into that bunker and spam gas, dynamite, and explosives because the attackers literally need to be inside the bunker to capture it. Like, why not just expand the capture point beyond just the inside of the bunker, or allow players to burn the capture point from on top of the bunker, or allow players to blow a hole in the roof so there's not just two bottlenecked points of entry to get into the bunker? Like, DICE, come on, this isn't rocket science. DICE, PLEASE! But that's probably my only major gripe with the patch. You know, that and the fact that they added battle packs as paid microtransactions that you can buy now. But let's face it, who wasn't expecting that in the age of Activision and Call of Duty? There's still a lot of really good changes here though. For instance, the airburst mortar has gotten an appropriate nerf where it no longer fires with pinpoint-like accuracy in rapid succession. Players actually have to hold still for a good amount of time before it becomes accurate. They've also reduced this blast radius as well, which I have no problem with considering it's a weapon that can be fired out of line of sight. Uh, for the Suez map, they kept the three primary flag locations the same, but added two more flags. So it's still a linear map, but they added some armored cars in the spawn, and uh, you know, with the addition of those back caps, at least this will help alleviate player pileups on the central point and make it slightly harder to spawn trap. They've added a badass ricochet audio cue for when your bullets bounce off tanks at oblique angles, so that will help players to not confuse that mechanic with dusting. And they've added the request order mechanic where if your squad leader doesn't assign squad objectives and you request an order, you'll be put in queue to become the new squad leader if they don't assign an order after a minute or so, which is a great team play innovation. And praise the sun that you can now customize your soldier loadout in the main menu. Overall, I want to see this game do well and succeed in the long term. I'm really hoping in the future they tackle issues like gas and explosive spam, you know, perhaps take a look at adjusting guns like the Model 10A Hunter, or even making other guns a little more viable to help encourage more weapon choice and variety in a game that is already struggling with that aspect. I hope that they add more weapon content and that not all of those guns are hidden behind a paywall like Premium. And this might be controversial to some of my tanking friends, but I would recommend taking a look at the heavy tanks, you know, having the quick repair function. It's already the most armored vehicle in the game with the most health. 
and with its ability to generate health on the fly, it makes it one of the most dominant vehicles on the battlefield, and it can be a little ridiculous at times. Maybe you guys disagree with me, but I'm already seeing an overabundance of players picking heavy tanks over the other tanks because of this function. I remember when light tanks were the most used tanks during the beta. That's not the case anymore. I also think it's ridiculous that while you're customizing your tank or vehicle loadout, somebody can swoop in and steal that tank or vehicle slot out from under your nose. DICE needs to allow players to reserve that slot and then give them the time that they need to customize their vehicle loadout and tailor it to the situation on the battlefield. It also never made much sense to me that you could do the majority of damage to a behemoth, but it was actually the player who finished it off with the last shot that got rewarded with the most points and kills. I really feel like DICE should add in some behemoth assist points. If you're able to contribute a large amount of damage towards it, you should be rewarded with a nice point bonus. As it stands, I see a lot of players ignoring the behemoth because there aren't really that many points in it for them to risk their lives to attack it, and this results in poor gameplay choices and a behemoth just dominating the map. And I really do hope that they do fix some of the revive bugs that are plaguing the game right now, like not being able to fire your weapon after being revived, as well as all the movement and vaulting glitches, just to help clean up the experience. Thankfully, DICE is hard at work with more patches in the pipeline and, you know, more changes on the way. So we'll just have to wait and see what they do. And that's really what I had today for you guys. You know, give me your thoughts on this patch. Did you like what you heard today? Do you agree or disagree? Is there anything else that you found interesting that I missed here that you'd like to add? If you guys want to leave a comment, you know what to do. But that's what it's going to be today, guys. This has been Brutal Death Pie, and I'll speak with you guys again soon. Have a good one. I'm out.